In the modern world of racing, cars have to follow several regulations and limitations in order to be eligible for their championship. Even in Formula 1, the pinnacle of motorsport, where the speed feels unbound from every human boundary, engineers have to deal with limits and restrictions, without losing sight of their main dream as racing car designers. Building the fastest car ever. In modern days, this feels like an impossible target to accomplish, for safety and sporting reasons. In the past, we've seen some brave attempts to elude those limits, to only be banned for being either too fast or too dangerous. Realistically, in a world of restrictions and standardized rules, a race car engineer's dream to design the fastest car possible will probably and forever be just a dream. But what if you had no limits? This was the question that Yasunori Yamauchi, creator of the video game brand Gran Turismo, asked the genius Adrian Newey, technical director and engineer for the Red Bull Racing F1 team. The most ambitious question to the most ambitious mind in the racing world. It was at that moment that the Red Bull X project started. The project officially started in 2010, a special year for both Red Bull and Gran Turismo. The first one was bringing home their first F1 driver and manufacturer titles, with Sebastian Vettel becoming the all-time youngest driver to become world champion. It was a year where Red Bull was finally getting the recognition for the growth of their past seasons, becoming the most influential and advanced team between 2010 and 2013. On the other hand, Gran Turismo was returning to the market with Gran Turismo 5, after a six years break since Gran Turismo 4 for PS2, and some serious controversy for the continuous delay of GT5 launch date. For a strange twist of fate, they decided to converge their forces right in that particular year. Back in the past, Gran Turismo already made some important partnerships with famous brands. In Gran Turismo 4, they presented the Nike One 2022, a futuristic prototype designed by Phil Frank, which resembled the image of a sprinter getting ready for the start of the race. It was an unusual design, which made the car unique for its time. The Red Bull X1 project, however, was on a completely different level. It was a purebred of motorsport innovations, a challenge towards human capabilities and possibilities, something that Gran Turismo never tried before, something that nobody actually attempted before. The project was aiming high from the beginning. The very first concept was a low downforce prototype capable of generating 1,479 horsepower, reaching a top speed of 400 km an hour and a lateral g-force of 6g. Despite the main base being an F1 car concept, it looked like none of it. The wheels were covered by two separated fender frames incorporating headlights and the single seat was roofed by a transparent ultra-resistant glass, making it more similar to a spaceship rather than a Formula 1 car. The X1 at that moment was already a monster machine, but for an ambitious mind like Adrian Newey's, this wasn't enough. The low downforce idea surely would give the car a great top speed, but on the other hand, it would suffer and struggle where grip is needed, he thought. Generally speaking, when a car has a low downforce setup, it means that it's generating little resistance with air. This will create some advantages, offering a great top speed in a straight line, but at the same time disadvantages in the corners, as the low resistance will prevent the car from generating the grip needed for the corners. A high downforce setup, on the other hand, will give opposite results. The high resistance will make it harder for the car to reach great top speed as it's more difficult for it to penetrate the air. But at the same time, it will have much more cornering speed as the higher air resistance will push the car into the ground, generating more downforce and as a consequence, more grip. For the X1, the low downforce idea at this point has its benefits as well as its disadvantages, 
and as you can already guess, you can't have only both the advantages of the two extremes. Or can you? With a conventional approach, probably the answer to this question would be a sick no. But the X1 already showed that it's made of nothing conventional. And so, Edu and Nui decided to implement a revolutionary aerodynamic technology that was long forgotten and banned from the racing world since the 70s. Edu and Nui implemented the fan car technology to the X1 prototype. But what is the fan car technology? The fan car technology consists of a fan mounted on the back of the car, powered by a secondary engine with the task of sucking the air beneath the floor of the machine, creating an extremely low pressure zone and drastically increasing the downforce without affecting the rest of the aerodynamic. Also, this technology ensures extraordinary grip even at lower speed, when the aerodynamic effect is not as visible as in higher speed. This, however, wasn't a completely new idea. The fan car technology finds its origin back in the 70s, when it was first introduced by Shopperl with a 2J model to compete in the KM Championship, and a few years later by Brabham in F1 with a BT46B. Both were banned for their incredible performance and overwhelming speed, and as a result, this technology became forgotten by the world of motorsport, becoming an unreachable myth for racing car designers. Until now. Thanks to Adrian Newey and Gran Turismo, this was no longer a dream, but reality. The final form of the X1, with his smooth lines and low air resistance, ensured a maximum speed of over 500 km an hour. And at the same time, with the insane grip due to the fan technology and rear diffusers, a maximum lateral g-force exceeding 8g. It was barely beyond the limit of what the human body is capable of handling. Unfortunately, as a consequence of it, the X1 never made a shakedown on a real track. Instead, it was made possible to drive for everyone just for Gran Turismo. Although not being an accurate simulator, the Japanese game made it clear to the world which were the real possibilities of the X1. On his first shakedown, driven by Sebastian Vettel, the prototype managed to complete a lap on the Suzuka circuit in 1 minute and 11.54 seconds, beating the 2009 F1 record lap of almost 20 seconds. Needless to say, this was something extraordinary not only beating, but annihilating the F1 record by 20 seconds was the result that both Gran Turismo and Red Bull were looking for, creating the ultimate time attack machine, and finally, accomplishing the desire to craft the fastest car on Earth, without any limit, without any restriction. On Gran Turismo 5, the car will be renamed Red Bull X 2010, instead of X1, following the year of production, and one year later, it will be revisited into the Red Bull X 2011, an advanced version of the previous car, with some minor improvements in the aerodynamics and engine, with the most visible difference being the bigger rear wing. Unfortunately, the cycle of Red Bull X will not continue forever. The last fan car to date was the Red Bull X 2014, an aesthetic evolution of the previous cars, with more aggressive lines, a slimmer and lower rear wing and other performance improvements. Released just for Gran Turismo 6, it marked the end of the X partnership with Red Bull Racing, with a last and unforgettable swan song. As for the present, it's not easy as it seems to drive one of those cars. The last fan car was purely released just for Gran Turismo 6, and the latest installment, Gran Turismo Sport, has none of the above. It's easy to believe that the project is now well buried, since almost 7 years passed. But we are not getting away empty-handed. This project showed us what the racing possibilities really are, and most importantly, it proved that there are no real limits for human capabilities. The fastest car on Earth. At least, until someone even more ambitious than Gran Turismo and Red Bull will create something even faster. After all, if the past is certain, the future is all to be discovered. And if the past already confirmed what we are capable of, the future will prove it again.